So you have your chest out. Is is that for us? Yes, yes. It's okay. for the ladies. All right. Yes. We got this. This is the Bobby V neck, huh? But it's shaved. Yeah, it's shaved a little bit. You know, I don't want too hair. I'm a hair guy, so I gotta keep it. You know, what I'm saying under control, like my beard. I gotta shave that thing. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying. Okay. If you don't shave it, you might not like me. So no taco meat. No taco, you know what I'm saying? It's all Bel Grande, you know what I'm saying? No, I was just playing. It's all natural juices and berries. Okay. All natural, like you, all natural. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of speaking of natural, we just saw your words video. Mm -hmm. And the video girl, she's not your typical video girl. She's, she's not. No, she's what? dark complected. What's short I thought, hair? I thought that. What's the typical? Typical is light skin, long hair. No, know, for real. She was fully clothed. So did you have anything to do with that or what? Did of course, anybody... of course. Um, even if you look at a few of my videos, you know, I always try to, you know, um, put dark skinned women um, in my video because I feel like, you know, that there is that stigma that uh, we only use light skinned women with long hair, you know what I'm saying? So um, I love women of all complexions. So um, definitely um, that was my idea. Speaking about the video, it was inspired by Lionel Richie's Hello. Mm -hmm. So what made you what made you want to go there with that? Um, I feel like, you know, to, to kind of pay homage to, to what R&B used to be, um, I really wanted to go back and, and look at a lot of the older videos and how they made them. And kind of like make, kind of like on, on my next few videos that I'm going to do, mm -hmm. I'm going to definitely pay homage to, to, to the old school videos to kind of let, you know, the youth of today know like, you know, this is where R&B came from. Um, R&B did, at one point, have a lot of substance. You know, we still have a lot of substance. Mm -hmm. I mean, some some people do, but, you know, um, to just show that other side that, you know, there is a real world out there. There are people that are blind. There are people that are deaf. Um, there are people that are handicapped, you know? And, um, and there are people that love these people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I definitely wanted to include that and just kind of pay homage to Lionel Richie on that. So we know, speaking about influences and paying homage to um, the former heads of R&B, we know you've worked with Raphael Sadiq. Mm -hmm. So who else do you, do you admire? Who else do you respect? Oh, you know, D'Angelo, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, Babyface, The Isleys, mm -hmm. Anita Baker, um, Tony Tony Tone, well, you know, Raphael Sadiq came from that. H Town, you know, those are kind of Jodeci, mm -hmm. Devontae Swing during that little era, you know, he was doing his thing. Um, you know, those are kind of some of my influences and so many more mm -hmm. that really did a lot to, uh, you know, kind of make R&B music what it was at the time. Let's talk about the shift in R&B. Mm -hmm. It's more techno, it's pop-ish, yeah. auto-tune. Right. Um, how do you feel about that? I, you know what? <sighs> I think music always changes. I, I remember at one point, um, you know, I worked with Tim and Bob and they've been in the game so long and I remember them telling me about the shift, um, the disco era. Mm -hmm. And you had all these R&B singers and stuff like that and it was, almost, it was almost like they were forced to do the disco thing because that's what was hot, you know? Um, I think today's music, um, I think what they call Neo Soul is R&B. I think what they play on the radio, that's kind of more hip hop. Because to be played on the radio now, it's more hip hop driven. So we have to really kind of make those hip hop kind of sounding records to, to, to be played on radio. And you know, to be played on radio is ultimately what you want because that's your success, you know. Um, that's how you really pay your bills, that's how you're known, that's how you, you know, um, stay mainstream. Um, I just think, you know, it's just, it's definitely just changing, things are going more, you know, techno. Um, but, you know, I think um, at the end of the day, you have to really stick true to your, your craft because if you try to go and do that, and that's not really who you are, you might make a hit record out of it, but it's going to be your last because you kind of like sold yourself out a little bit. So then you lead me into the industry, the music industry. So you said Fly on the Wall is about um, all you've been through and all you've seen in the music industry. So what would you say is your greatest lesson that you've learned thus far? I think the biggest lesson um, 
it's just really to continue to grind. You know, you gotta work hard. Um, it's gonna be so many people that hate on you and, and people don't even know your struggle, you know, and, and people will hate. So um, the biggest lesson to me is to not really listen to the outsiders or listen to what people say because people will have you all over the place if you listen to them. I mean, you could play one song for five people and guarantee not all five are gonna like that song. That's just how it is. So if you kind of listen to what everybody else says and don't go with your gut feeling, you're gonna lose every time because you're not really being who you are. How do you stay grounded um, with all the influences from the industry coming in, people in your ear? How do you make sure that you stay real and humble and true to yourself? Um, I think that um, I have great family. Um, I have a great support and a great root system. I think everything in life, it starts from your root system, you know. Um, a tree can't blossom and grow if it doesn't have a foundation. I just think that, you know, just staying down with the, the team that I have and the people that I've been in place with for so long, you know, that, that keeps me grounded. Okay. And then, I guess this is kind of switching gears, but it's like a regular person type of thing to do is you went to school. Right. I know that you went to college. Went to college, right. So, um, <coughs> how has your education helped you in your career? Oh, definitely. Um, I think um, college, um, college really helps you to like prioritize because there's so many things going on in college. This is your first time like being away from your family. Um, this is your first kind of real, real independence. Mm -hmm. So, I think college just kind of like helped me to, you know, put things in order prioritize um, because it's always parties but you always have a long a whole bunch of papers and a whole bunch of stuff you got to do so it's kind of like and you got to like almost it's about maneuvering mm -hmm. and being in this business is the same thing and so then talk about the Bobby V Foundation <clears throat> and what that's about and what's next for the organization uh, the Bobby V Foundation we um, well during the holidays we give away, with well, Thanksgiving, we get we gave away probably about uh, close to 100 turkeys. Mm -hmm. And we have this event every year around Thanksgiving holidays. Um, my father is in um, urban gardening. Mm -hmm. And he runs this whole urban gardening program in Atlanta. And we kind of tie his program in with what I do during the holidays because he works with underserved communities right. and underserved families. So we tied, <clears throat> we tied a Bobby V Foundation in with that. Also, during Christmas time, we adopt about 15 families, um, and they give us their wish list of things that they want for Christmas, and we grant them all of those things. Um, also, we give away scholarships um, to students um, with, that want to pursue higher education. We're talking about the album that comes out March 22nd. 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, how is it different from what you've done in the past? You know what, I won't really say that my album is, is, is a lot more different. I, I would just say that I just try to keep it consistent with every album that I do. I know a lot of people refer, like, your first album is so great. Oh my goodness, your first album. Mm -hmm. I'm like, did you hear the second or the third one? Oh, well, no, uh, but the first one. <laughs> so it's like, I really want people to, you know, get out, get my second, third, and this album as well, mm -hmm. and you can see that you know, I really keep it consistent and try to make great albums from top to bottom. You know, that's what it's all about. I would say that on this album, it's more different because I, I have more features than I've ever done. You know, we have 50 Cent, Lloyd Banks, we got Twist on the album, we got Cy High the Prince, we got great producers, we got Tim and Bob, Brian Cox, LOS, um, um, who else, Jazzy Faye, uh, Big Fruit who produced Beat, Beat for me. Um, and just a lot of great producers, so I think this album is definitely well-rounded. Um, I really took my time because my last album came out in um, 09, and it's 011. So, um, you know, this album is definitely complete from top to bottom. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, I just really made one of those albums that people can ride to. Okay, good, good. All right, so that's it. Anything else you want to add? Blue Collar. Make sure y'all follow me on Twitter at Bobby V. And what's your Twitter? At Madame Noir. Make sure y'all follow her as well. Great young lady. All natural as me. Juices and berries. Holla. <laughs>